Hello, my name is Pesista Maisia Adriari and I'm here to present about our sufficient paper that is titled Synthesis and Characterization of Cellulose Acetate Membrane from Corn or Zia Maize Husk as Lithium Ion Battery Electrolyte Membrane for the Second International Conference on Energy Storage Technology and Applications 2022. Our team consists of five authors, which are Fairus Hasmin Majid, Pesista Maisia Adriari, Riri Nastuti, Sofilo Solihatunisa, and Enderet Nudiatanti as corresponding author. The first thing we're going to talk about is the introduction or the background of our research. So, as you all know, batteries are a form of energy storage that has a lot of potential for use due to their quick response modularity and also adaptable installation. But specifically in recent years, rechargeable lithium ion batteries or LIDs have become widespread and withdrawn great attention of many researchers because of its advantages, which are high energy efficiency, long life cycle, and also relatively high energy density. LIB consists of an anode, cathode, electrolyte, and separator. Separators are essential because they allow ion transport across connected membrane pores and avoid internal short circuits between the cathode and anode. Separators are made of polymeric materials such as cellulose, cellulose acetate or CA, polyphenylidene fluoride or PVDF, and polyethylene or PE. Bio-based polymers or naturally derived polymers are gaining popularity due to the high public concern about waste. One of the highly used bio-based polymers is cellulose, specifically cellulose derivatives such as methyl cellulose, hydroxypropyl cellulose, carboxymethyl cellulose, and also cellulose acetate or CA. CA is the most bountiful bio-based polymer with many advantages, including its high decomposition temperature and excellent ability to increase ionic conductivity through cells. In addition, processing cellulose acetate also can solve the low porosity problem of commercial separators. Several studies to make CA for mature ingredients have been conducted. According to Mendes, corn husk is a residue with low lignin content of 7.9%, hemicellulose of 37.5%, and alpha cellulose of 35.3%, thus making it practical to make CA from corn husk. Several studies have modified the PVDF-based electrolyte separator membrane to polymer blending such as blending PVDF with cellulose, PVDF with CA, and PVDF with polyacrylonitrile, and also adding fillers to improve the performance of the separation membrane. In this research, we modified the development of PVDF and CA polymer blending with the addition of nanoclay as filler. One of the weaknesses of PVDF polymer as a host matrix is its high degree of crystallinity, which causes low electrolyte absorption values and can reduce ionic conductivity. Therefore, a filler that functions to overcome the weaknesses of PVDF polymer is needed. Next subject that we're going to talk about is the methodology or the steps of this research. But first, there are several important materials of this research, which are corn husk, clay, and also PVDF. So why we decided to use corn husk as the source of cellulose for the CA synthesis? That is because corn or zia maize is one of the main food products in Indonesia. Based on the study conducted by Dahlianti, 30 million tons of corns were produced in 2018 and 308,000 tons were produced in 2019. As a result, the remaining components of the corn plant like the husk, core, and stem are anticipated to produce 87.5 million tons of corn waste annually. So, we decided to take advantage of the abandoned corn waste to be the source of cellulose for the CA synthesis. There are three main steps to make CA from corn husk, which are pretreatment, delignification, and synthesis of CA. Pretreatment process consists of washing and drying corn husk and then grinding them into a fibrous powder and adding phosphoric acid solution. Delignification stage is performed using sodium sulfide. This process was implemented at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for 2 hours, followed by bleaching with hydrogen peroxide solution at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius for 3 hours. The produced cellulose was filtered afterward and wilted at 100 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. The CA synthesis process was carried out using acetic acid glacial solution and hydrous acetic acid and sulfuric acid. 
The reaction was performed at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius with a stirring process for two and a half hours. The mixture is then washed, filtered, and soaked in methanol for 10 minutes. CA was obtained by immersion in methanol and was later dried at 50 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. The final step involves X-ray diffraction or XRD and scanning electron microscope or SEM to characterize the generated CA. The next step is the fabrication of VVDF CA nanoclay electrolyte membrane. Clay was dissolved in dimethyl acetamide or DMAC for one hour at 1200 rotation per minute stirring process. Then PVDF was added and continuously stirred for one hour at 800 RPM. Then cellulose acetate was added to the mixture and constantly stirred for one hour. Then while the mixture keeps being stirred for one hour, polyphenyl pyrrolidone or PVP was added to the mixture. For membrane casting, clean glasses were used and a 200 micrometer film thickness regulator was installed. After that, the solution is poured into the glass after which the automatic glass press is turned on. The film is then submerged for 24 hours at room temperature in an immersion bath containing water and the laminated glass. The film was then removed and it was then allowed to dry for 24 hours at room temperature. Then the cassette membrane were characterized using XRD, SEM, and also porosity and electrolyte uptake test. Based on the method that has been carried out in this study, several things can be discussed, such as the structure of CA from corn husk and the similarity of CA characteristics from corn husk and commercial CA. CA from corn husk has a powdery fibrous structure. A comparison of CA structure from corn husk with commercial CA can be seen in the figures presented. The left figure is the obtained CA from corn husk and the right figure is commercial CA. XRD result of the CA obtained also show similar characteristics with commercial CA. Based on the diffraction graph, the crystallinity of CA from corn husk is similar to commercial CA. This is indicated by the peaks found in the extracted CA corresponding to the commercial CA powder. The diffraction peak for extracted CA is at 2 theta equals to 21 degree and the diffraction peak for commercial CA is at 2 theta equals to 19 degree. 47 degree. The diffraction peak also comparable to the findings that is published by Wei Min Kang. That is, extracted CA have the diffraction peak at 2 theta equals to 20.3 degree. The PVDF CA nanoclay electrolyte membrane that was made with a process known as non solvent induced phase separation indicates the presence of PVDF CA functional groups extracted from corn husk. All samples have similar peaks at the peaks of 1182 per cm and 878 per cm. The next result is the X ray diffraction patterns of the PVDF CA nanoclay electrolyte membrane. With the addition of CA as a blending polymer, it shows that there is a decrease in the peak which indicates the degree of crystallinity is getting smaller. It can be seen in the figure presented. XRD results of PVDF CA nanoclay electrolyte membrane showed that the lowest degree of crystallinity is at the CA concentration of 50% variation. All samples from the XRD results show similar results to those reported by BCK, which exhibits that the XRD results of PVDF CA nanoclay electrolyte membrane peaked at around 20 degree to 21.9 degree. The result of porosity and electrolyte uptake of PVDF CA nanoclay electrolyte membrane also shows the significance of CA as blending polymer. The result shows that the higher CA concentration resulted higher porosity and electrolyte uptake. This shows that the highest porosity and electrolyte uptake results were found in the composition of PVDF of 50% weight percent and CA of 50% weight percent, namely 79.11% and 139.649%. We conclude that synthesis of PVDF CA nanoclay for lithium iron battery was conducted in the study by recovering CA from corn husk and synthesis of PVDF CA based membranes with nanoclay and PVP additives. Synthesis of CA from corn husk exhibits XRD results with similar peak of commercial CA. PVDF CA based membrane with a composition of 50% PVDF and 50% CA had the best characterization result.
Thank you for your attention and we look forward for the discussion.